the one and only sexy mama, LaDonna Ray. What do I do? The microphone's on. Well, I guess I say hello, hello, and welcome to the LaDotta Ray Show. I'm your host, LaDotta Ray. And, you know, there's so many things that we have to talk about, but we have these conversations just casually, and we don't necessarily bring them on to a podcast or a show or anything like that. But some of them need to be brought to a show. You ever have a conversation and say, that's a podcast. That's an episode. That, that's a movie. Yeah, I have those all the time. In fact, some of my friends are concerned that I might be bringing some of our conversations to my podcast. Now, I'm not doing that per se, <laughs> but they do inspire me on a lot of things that we talk about because it just gets that deep. Anyhow, uh, the LaDonna Ray show was um, pretty much on a journey to interviewing content creators from all over the world. I mean, I super love creativity. When you're making music, films, documentaries, projects, whatever, making it happen. And it turned into, actually, it, I started off with a lot of celebrities and then I started talking to regular people. Regular people have more information that we can really use than talking to a celebrity per se about their latest album hit, uh, co uh, concert, tour, movie, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily beneficial. Now it may be entertaining, but it's not necessarily beneficial. But I wanna touch on trends that help us when it comes to you know self-improvement, community improvement, outreach, things like that. And one of the things that I noticed is when I spoke to quite a few caregivers. So a while back, I used to work for the Alzheimer's Association and we had a caregiver department where they actually there was support for caregivers who were taking care of Alzheimer's patients, whether it be a parent, a sister, a child. Yes, a grandparent. These caregivers were. Uh, connected to the hotline 24 seven. And I noticed that, you know, it was not all fun and games. It was very hard for some people. And I was only in my twenties at the time. So I didn't necessarily see that far ahead, but as I get older, my friends and I, or the community of people that I speak to are more and more familiar with caregiving. And those of you that know, I, I help take care of my dad. My mom is is a virtual uh, responsibility that I have because she lives so far away. But here's the one thing that I am struggling with that is definitely a topic. Healthcare disparities are more than just access to the right doctor or the right medication or the right treatment plan. But the disparity is, it gets deeper than that. Here's what I've discovered. I am going crazy trying to manage five my charts times three. So if you are a, a, a patient of, of one doctor at one medical group, they may refer you to go to a different medical group. And that referral could be in or out of network. Now you, 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 you got the referral in your hand. You, the patient, has to call your insurance company to find out if anybody on this referral list is going to take your insurance. Okay. And, and then on top of that, not only are you calling your insurance company to see if they'll cover it, maybe I didn't say that right. You're calling your insurance company to see if they'll cover this, 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 um, this referral, but now you're calling the, the, the doctor that you're referred to or the list of doctors to find out if they take your insurance. That's two calls. You've already been to the doctor. They gave you a referral. You got to call your insurance company and you have to call the doctor that you're being referred to. And then 
once you get the green light that they accept or they're taking new patients or are they taking new patients based on your insurance? Cause that has happened where I didn't mention my insurance first and, and made the appointment and they called me back and said, they're not accepting my insurance or they're not accepting new patients unless you got a PPO. Right. And I've been on both sides of the fence, PPO, HMO. They both suck in their own ways. Not only that, you still have to make the phone call to make the appointment. So you're the patient or the caregiver of the patient. You make all these phone calls. You finally get an appointment. Where is that appointment stored? You don't have an appointment card because you went to your primary care doctor physically or through telehealth. And if they gave you any information, it wasn't an appointment card. It was a phone number to call someone to make an appointment. Where is that information stored? I know what you're thinking. Oh, just go to my chart. What chart? Because you got my chart, you got advocate, you've got uh, University of Chicago. I'm in Chicago, University of Chicago, you got Rush. You've got all these different hospitals that have their own patient portal. And you have to sign up for each one of them because there is no unified way of keeping track of your, your health care. So if you're a caregiver, you have to manage not only your own health care, but your children, your parents, maybe grandparents or whoever else. And, and it's not just them, it's them and their, their network groups or medical groups. So here's why I'm, I'm pleading for like, what are you guys doing? Because we're already in a, a healthcare disparity type society in the first place, because we all know that even in COVID it was off the chain. They just let them, the elderly were just forgotten about. And we all know it, but now that we've come out of it, come out of it. I put that in quotes because COVID hasn't gone anywhere. You still have people that are elderly or not even in the frame of mind of managing all of this, as well as managing a grocery bill, a household bill, the medications they have to take. Let me tell you something. My father went to the emergency room a while back, a few months ago. They gave him all new changes in medications. I'm literally cutting pills because they've, they've, they've brought down the doses on one. So I've got to cut this pill four times in order to get it to the right dose because they won't refill it with the right dosage. Yeah. And, and I have to go to that, my chart from that hospital to override the other, my chart with the latest information of medications that need to be taken. Not only that, when my sons turned 12 years old, 12 years old, I was able to manage before they were 12. It was myself and my two boys, the, the two little ones. I could go to just switch patient. When they turned 12, they disappeared. And I had to sign up for their own, my chart. So now everybody's all over the place. And, and, and you you talk to your doctor. Have you ever talked to your doctor or, or your loved one's doctor and they talk to you all condescending because they're like, well, you didn't make the appointment or you missed the appointment. I wonder why. You didn't make the appointment because there's 20 steps to getting the appointment. And then once you make the appointment, you don't know which patient portal it's on. There is no follow up. So there is no follow through. This is a mess people. This is a mess. And we're always talking about unifying gun control or unifying so many other things, but where is the healthcare unification? They've got a database with my DNA in it. I bet you, you type up my name and my last four digits and birth date, and it'll tell you everywhere I've been, everything I've had, every trace of everything that I don't even have. But where is the managed healthcare information where I can go to one portal 
and see all of my doctors, all of my appointments and where I need to go next. All this AI stuff is not helping. And, 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 and the other thing is an elderly person is not necessarily using a smartphone. So you're sending them just to good luck. Good luck. I am tired. I am tired of our society not addressing the real issues. I am tired of our society acting like this isn't happening. Yes, I said it. I am tired of turning a blind eye and just hoping for the best. This cannot be how this is supposed to be done with all the technology that we have. Why is it that the only way to manage a family is to be all over the place? I can't handle it. I won't even go into managing my kids' grades, all the parent portals. Oh my goodness. But I thought this would be easier. I thought, oh, all you need to do is log on and there's your information. Oh, wow, it looks so appealing, but it's not. It's easy for them. See, your healthcare provider can easily go into a patient portal and update the, the notes. Okay, so patient notes go in there. Um, your, your discharge information goes in there, your medication information. It's easy for them. It's not easy for you. Because when you log in, you don't know what the, the test results are. The test results are in there. It shows your um, lab results. Some portals explain if this is good or bad and some don't. I want to know why is it that if you tell your doctor that you've been having some crazy thoughts after being put on a medication, that they don't become proactive and recommend another one. Why do you have to say the medication is making me loopy or nutty or think of things that I shouldn't be thinking about? Can you change my medication? Why is it that I have to say that I have to, you have to be able to advocate for yourself because your primary care physician or your oncologist or your neurologist, heck, I got a list of them. Your rheumatologist, there, there's a bunch of them. Your podiatrist, your, your, your vascular or cardi cardiologist, your orthopedic, ortho orthopedic surgeon, none of them are going to be proactive enough to say, whoa, wait, what did you say? You're having bad thoughts. Not all of them. Not all of them. Because I went to an appointment where those thoughts were mentioned and no changes were even recommended. I just thought it was something that was happening because the thoughts were there. No, it's the medication. What do you think? What do you think we need to do? How are you managing it? Because if you have two or more children, heck, even one or more children, you not only have your portal, but your child's separate portal once they turn 12 like their their health information is now private at 12 kids in some states can get a sex change at after they're 12 years old they don't need a parent consent and the parent doesn't need to know about it some school systems don't even have to tell the parent if the child is having thoughts or discussing with them about their sexuality my child should not be discussing his sexuality with his teacher. But if he does, I want to know about it. You mean to tell me that he's not obligated or she's not obligated to tell me what my son has discussed with him? Where they do that at? So if you look at this, 12 years old, I am emancipated technically from my mother and father's portal, right? But yet the bill still comes to me. It's got my name on it. I'm the guarantor, not my son, not the 12 year old, not the 13 year old, but yet they can go in some States and decide I want to be a girl and they're born as a boy. And 
the health care will allow for this experimental procedure to be done on a child that changes their mind about their style, the instrument they want to play, the sport they're interested in, the books they read. They change their minds like that, but you would let them make a permanent decision, a permanent disfiguring decision, like what sex they want to be when they grow up. And then when they get to that point and decide, oh, wow, I made a mistake, it's irreversible. And where's the medical care after the procedure is done? There's a debate about that. So we'll, we'll experiment on you, but there will be no follow through. Oh, and by the way, your parent has to pay for it. We don't have to tell them. What are we doing? Now, I did start this off about talking about the elderly. My heart is going out to the elderly. You will be an elderly, elderly one day, and I pray that you make it. I will be an elderly one day. And the stuff that I'm seeing right now is preparing me on the surface because guess what's going to happen when I become an elderly? It's going to all change. I don't know how. I don't know when, but it's not going to be what we're dealing with right now. It may get worse. It may get a little better, but it hasn't gotten better in I don't know how long. The only difference is it's electronic now. That's the difference. I am tired. Our mortality rate is rising. It's too much. There's a reason behind this. And we just have to get in front of it at some point. I'm LaDonna Ray. Thank you so much for being a part of this discussion. Many more to come. God bless. And thank you for watching the LaDonna Ray Show. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the other side of the podcast. All right. Bye-bye for now. LaDonna Ray Show.